Hello and welcome back to Boring Dad Gaming, where today we're going to be playing some more Death Trick Double Blind. It's 3pm with Detective Jones. Uh, there's a few people I'd like to speak to. I think we're going to start off with Yan. Uh, we, want, we need her alibi, definitely. And it might lead into something we can contradict a Dean with as well. Uh, so let's start off with that. Time of death, what were you doing? Where were you the night the murder happened? Is that when Hattie died? Yes. Would you please answer the question? I was with Aideen in our trailer. The whole time? Yeah, it was raining. There was nothing else to do anyway. Sounds like they're covering for each other. What were you doing? We were listening to the radio we borrowed from Chip. The New England DK was playing. When did you hear about Hattie? We heard knocking a little after 7pm. Aideen opened the door and saw Echo. Echo never comes to our trailer. Echo wanted to talk to Aideen alone, so she asked me to stay inside. When she came back, she was crying, and she told me Hattie's dead. Well, we're going to contradict you here, because your statement contradicts Aideen's updated statement. Yan told me she was with Aideen on Monday in their train car, but I already found out Aideen wasn't home. She was out with Rolf. So Aideen already told me the truth. She wasn't with you on Monday. Okay. Okay, that's all you have to say. She shrugs. I really was in the trailer the whole time. I was just listening to the radio. Do you remember when Aideen came back? Yeah, 7pm, right before Echo came by. Okay, so no, I don't see anything contradictory then to what they're all saying. It, it, all, it all tallies in my mind. Um, so we've got her alibis. Just Alice now. Uh, the glasses. See if she knows what those are. She might know about the trophy as well. We know she was going in the train car. When you snuck into Hattie's room, did you ever go through the drawers? She examines me for a second. Oh, you want to ask about the glasses in Hattie's drawer? I've seen them before in her drawer. But Hattie doesn't wear glasses, right? Has anyone seen her in the glasses? No, but maybe she only wears them in her room. Like, like pyjamas, but on your face. Face pyjamas. I don't think that's how it works. Those glasses have a prescription. What does that mean? A, a pres... Uh, for example, you have great vision, right? You can see stuff clearly from far away. Yeah. So, if you put those glasses on, you'll feel uncomfortable and dizzy. They're designed for someone who can't see things from a distance. How far away can't they see? Depends on the person. If it's really bad, it could be as close as reading from an arm's length away. But then you can just move the book closer to your face, right? Yes, but you can do that with some things. You think they're Hatties, right? Have you ever seen signs that Hattie has problems with her vision? I don't know. She never read a book in front of me. The point is, protect your vision or you'll end up having to wear these at all times. No, I can't do backflips with those on my face. That's what you're worried about? All right. Oh. Okay, well, we, I guess we've asked her a few things. Have we asked her three things? Alibi, glasses. Oh, and the contradiction. Okay, yeah, fair enough. All right, what about the trophy? You went into Hattie's room for the key, right? Yeah. Do you know about the trophy she keeps in her room? Of course. You want to know about the broken one, don't you? Right, you must have seen it. Wait, you didn't break it, right? No, it wasn't me, I swear. I don't know if I can trust your vows. Psh, I wouldn't lie about that. I wouldn't get into trouble for breaking it anyway. It's not like Hattie can complain. She's dead. Okay, I'll ignore the horror of that statement in favor of the logic. You know, when I went into her room yesterday, the trophy was still fine. What? When did you go in? Why did you go in? How did you go in? I picked her lock. It was yesterday morning. You know, I just thought. I'm not supposed to steal anything, but it doesn't count as stealing if the owner's dead right. But yeah, the trophies were all fine when I saw them. That's, that's crazy. Who else could have been in her room doing what? She shrugs nonchalantly. Are you absolutely sure about this? I wouldn't have missed a bunch of glass shards on the ground. This creates more questions than answers, but still it's useful information to have. Who knew it would come from an underage thief looking to steal from the dead? By the way, did you take anything from Hattie's room? I'm not going to get you in trouble, just in case you took away some important clues. I'm not even going to take them from you if you just let me take a look. No, I didn't take anything. Oh, that was a bit... <laughs> Back of my throat there. Really? Nothing helpful, just some cash. Alright. Okay, so we got three left. This has been useful. 
Uh, we've done a contradiction. We got her statement. Um, I think we. I think I'm going to leave it there for now. I think we go and check out Aideen, and I'm sure we've asked her about the glasses. I mean, it is entirely possible they were Hattie's glasses, but with the knife throwing trick. Would she not have to wear them, potentially, to throw the knives? It's interesting. I, I think, yeah, let's go see Aideen. When I entered the tent, the sight startled me a bit. It's dark inside. Most of the lights have been turned off, and the thick tarp of the, re the tent blocks out any bit of sunlight that threatens to seep through. I have to blink to get my vision adjusted to the darkness inside. Standing in the center of the ring, face, dim face dimly lit by a ring of soft lights, is Aideen. She's holding a thin torch the size of a drumstick, twirling it between her fingers. With a mysterious smile, she leans her head way, way back. Oh, she's fire-eating. She opens her mouth and inches the flaming torch towards it. The room is quiet. In the light of the dancing flame, everyone can clearly see the flame touch her tongue. The anticipation is palpable. Somehow, I feel as if I'm tasting ash and feeling the pain myself. All eyes on her, she closes her mouth around the flame. It's dark inside. Most of the lights have been turned off, and the thick tarp of the tent blo- Oh, I've read that. She smiles and walks over to a nearby table, picking up another identical torch. She dips the torches in the bottle of fluids on the table and carefully uses a towel to dry them off. One hand holds the two torches in an X shape, while the other produces a lighter. She touches it to one of the matches. Now, anywhere the flame goes, it leaves a trail of fire. She swipes the torch lightly over her bare forearm, and just as she said, a line of fire appeared. That must hurt right, but she calmly wiped it off with her other bare hand, as if it were dust on an old jacket. Have you ever wondered if you can move fire through your tongue? Someone sucks in a sharp breath loud enough to be heard through the tent. She sends a look in that direction, but keeps talking. No, just me, I suppose. Everyone laughed. You want to see it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Very well. Here we go. She holds the lit torch in one hand, the unlit one in another. Next, she rolls the unlit torch on her tongue for a few seconds before putting the flaming one out on it. A flame appears in her mouth, tiny enough to be the wick of a candle. She moves the unlit torch back using her tongue flame to light it up. It works. The flame jumps over and immediately expands to match the other side. She holds that pose, three points of light dancing in the darkness. It's somehow horrifying and fascinating at the same time. Amidst the applause, she finally closes her mouth and puts out the flames with a shake of her wrists. Sorry, I didn't see you earlier in the dark. That was great. Doesn't it hurt? I probably shouldn't feel proud making a 12-year-old laugh, but I do. You can't imagine what trying to eat a meal felt like in those first few months. Oh, how long have you been at it? I learned the basics when I was a teenager, but I started performing professionally, I don't know, seven or eight years ago. Now that he's seated, he's floating about... What? Who? What? No, I don't get that, sorry. Ah, uh, trying to guess me age? I was... When I first started performing, I'll leave you to do the math. What does it taste like? The fire is just fire. It has no taste. What registers, registers on my tongue is mostly just the gasoline. A little bitter, a little sour. If you close your eyes, maybe you can mistake it for alcohol. Are you supposed to drink that? It isn't gasoline poisonous. Only slightly. In all seriousness, no, you should not drink it. I used to do another trick called fire breathing. Basically, you hold a mouth for the fuel and blow it into an open flame. Makes you look like a dragon. You're not supposed to swallow any of it, but sometimes I couldn't help it if some of it went into my stomach. It gave me cramps like you wouldn't believe. And sometimes it felt like the fire has made its way up into my heart, burning all of my blood as it pumped. I had to drink two litres of milk every day. Apparently, it soaked up the gas. That sounds horrifying. You stopped, right? I stopped, but not for that reason. I stopped because then another performer I knew was doing the same trick in the park one day, and a gust of wind came out of nowhere. The fuel he spat out went straight back into his face. Oh god. He didn't die, but he ended up with burn scars all over his face and neck. Call it vanity, but I stopped after that. Well, I'm glad you did. Me too. Besides, can't do it in a circus tent anyway. Too much of a fire hazard. 
I don't want to make it sound all bad and terrifying. Honestly, those aren't even the worst parts. I think that only s succeeded in making me more terrified. You don't want to make it sound terrifying, but those aren't the worst parts? You'll never guess what the worst part is. What? The burping. Oh god, the burping. I'd be in the middle of a nice candlelit dinner date and all of a sudden burping gasoline. Can you imagine? Talk about breathing fire like a dragon. I sounded like one too. We look at each other and laugh. You're right, I would never have guessed that in a million years. After the laughter subsides, she was a little quiet. He, I mean, my, an old lover of mine used to complain I taste like fuel all the time. You know what I said? What did you say? I said, that just means my kisses are fiery. That should be funny, but something about the way she said it, a little quiet and melancholic, makes me hesitate to respond. She seems to realize that too and hastily switches topic. Anyway, it's more fun than you think and the coolest party trick ever, but probably not something you should do every day for the rest of your life. One day, probably not long, I will have to figure out something out. Especially now that I have someone I, I need to take care of. Does she mean Yan? I see. I want to see her grow up and I can't do that if I have too much gasoline in my blood and ash in my lungs. Still, I'll be sad to let this go. We sacrifice some things for things we love more. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, sorry I've been such a downer. The performance was still fun, right? Did you need me for anything else? I do, yes. I have some questions. So... I know there's a contradiction here somewhere. Well, I have asked her about both of those things. I should ask Yan about the bobby pin as well. Have I asked her about Yan? Probably not. Well, let's, why don't we ask her about her? How did you and Yan, your sisters? Adopted, yeah. I can tell. So, did your parents adopt, or...? No, I adopted her, just as a sister. I don't think I'm ready to be a full-fledged mother to a teenager yet. Maybe not ever. You adopted her. How did that happen? Where are her parents? It was three years ago. We were performing in San Francisco. I had just finished off my performance and was laying alone in my bed when I heard loud metal clanging. The whole train car was practically shaking. I thought there was an earthquake, but when I opened the door, it turned out someone was running on my roof. Some kids were chasing her around and she ditched them by jumping on top of my train. I just watched this tiny thing flying over gaps and moving like a car with wings. That was Yan, yeah. She was only 10 years old back then. She saw me and hopped through my window to hide in my room. I dealt with the kids chasing her. Why were they chasing her? It's a long time ago, I don't remember anymore. But we got to talking and she told me her parents aren't around. I don't know what came over me. Before I knew it, I was inviting her to stay and arranging things with Moses. Hmm. What is your contradiction? I'm gonna... I think I want to... I want to go through and try and brute force this again. I'm going to pause while I do it, though. Uh, honestly, I'm not getting it. Um, so I'm going to move on. I've got two slots left, so... I know I can't finish off my alibis because we don't know where Alice is currently. I kind of want to go and talk to Echo again. I don't know. I don't know exactly why, though. I feel like we've asked all of these people about the glasses. I mean, I'd like to ask Tito about stuff, but it doesn't seem to be someone I can actually interview. I wonder why that is. Why aren't we getting Tito's statement? <laughs> he doesn't seem to be here for, as a suspect. It's weird, but okay, we'll, we'll roll with that for now. Let's go. Let's go and see Echo. So he's got a contradiction as well. It's got to be something to do with his statement, right? Or is it something to do with... Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to... I'm sure I've, I'm sure I've done a lot of the combinations that make sense to me in my head. Okay, what can we actually ask him about that makes sense to...
Maybe I should go and ask Yan about the bobby pin. about chip statement doesn't well we haven't lost an AP so I guess that means there's nothing really here chip said on Monday night he was in his train car by himself the whole time he laughs derisively he said he was inside the whole time ha huh. and you said you saw him outside you think I'm lying I say he is well so it turns out chip wasn't lying oh well so it turns out chip wasn't lying and neither were you at least not intentionally he pauses for a moment but quickly understands someone else was wearing the hat that's correct. He makes the puffer gasp in exaggerated disbelief. Is that so hard to believe? No, who cares if his alibi was true or false? The least believable thing in all of this is that someone other than Chip willingly went out wearing that hat. Fair enough. He hasn't changed his statement, though. I mean... This doesn't result in the contra- yeah, it's fine. I don't really know what I want to ask him. I mean, I want to ask him everything, obviously. I think we would have already asked him about this. I'm, or, he, or he's the one that told us about this. Come on, Echo. Give up your contradictions. Uh... I just wondered if there might be, if he found the body at seven and everyone else is saying they saw him at seven, whether that's, there's some missing time there. It doesn't seem to be. I think I'll leave it there. I'm going to go and ask um, Jan about the bobby pin, I think. Yes, I think it's hers. Aideen is a bunch of these for her hair. Alice is a bunch too, but she doesn't use them herself. She just keeps them for doing other people's hair and for the wigs. But you don't use them? Silly, I've to short hair. I don't need pins. I used to have long hair when I came here, but it kept getting in my face when I was on the wire. Aiden helped put it in a bun with a thousand pins, but it was heavy and it hurt my head. So I got Alice to cut it all off, and my head feels so much lighter. Where did you get this one? Is it yours? But you don't have long hair. Maybe I'm just considering growing my hair out. Ah, I think you'd look good with long hair. Really, thanks. Then I'll have use for this stuff. I pretend to use the pin on my hair. Actually, you're supposed to use it in wavy side down, flat side up. Really, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Lots of people get that wrong. Well, thanks for the lesson. I'll remember that when I use these on my hair. Okay, interesting. Well, I might follow that lead and talk to people who have long hair. Uh, Aideen is one. Um, Echo is another. Let's go back to Aideen for now and ask her about it. Oh, did I drop this? She reflexively raises her hand to touch behind her ears. No, no, this is mine. Oh, okay. I thought you were picking it up for me or something. What are you doing with the bobby pin? I'm not sure, actually. I thought it might come in handy. 
Andy, I thought the only thing he's useful for is holding hair in place. You'd be surprised. All right, well, it didn't use an AP, so we can, we can still go and ask Echo about it, as he's got long hair as well. I like that if it's a bit of a waste, you don't waste the AP as well. I think that's that's quite a nice thing. What are you doing? Well, I'm just wondering if you've seen this. I'm here to answer all your questions about the case, not to review your accessories. Fair enough. All right, well, I'm going to ask Chip. Maybe you recognize it. I tap on the door. Yeah, come in. Welcome to my humble abode. Here to do your investigating? Help me with the questions. I'm happy to help. Uh. Okay, I'm going to ask him about the pin as well. Because don't forget, I mean, the person who. We think the person who knocked us out at the beginning was probably wearing this. It probably fell out of their head. Ah. Huh? Oh, a bobby pin. Is that yours? Perhaps. What would you need a bobby pin for? Your hair doesn't seem to demand it yet. They can come in handy. Oh, I see. Keeping these for the ladies for when you go on a date and they need to eat, but their hair keeps falling into the plate, right? Uh... Is that just me? Just you. In my defense, I didn't buy them just for that. I bought them because I need them for work. How would you need them for work? Ooh, maybe it is him. For wigs. It's good holding wigs in place, so I can have funny clown haircuts without sacrificing my glorious locks. So, when in, con in conclusion, pins are my friend. Wait, did what did you say you have them for again? I didn't. Mysterious. Fine, keep your secrets. Why would Chip knock us out? Hmm... Back to Jackie. And I'm hoping to see Alice not in the back room, because I'd like to get in there and see what's in her sketchbook. Nope, she's there with Yan. <laughs> okay. Is she always there? Except when Jones wants to talk to her, apparently. Um, okay, we're, we're looking for the secret apprentice still. But I, f I, I can't think who... Well, it just says find it. Find them. Because I think I've asked everyone at this point. Uh, what do I want to ask people about now? Uh, I'll start with Aideen, I suppose. Now, she doesn't have a contradiction here, which is interesting. So it's something the detective knows. Ask her about the prankster thing. I hear Yan seems to be a little bit of a prankster. Has she ever pranked you? I live with her. What do you think? I heard something about spiders and had his bed, and I really don't like spiders. Is there a reason for her pranking people? She seems to not have liked Harry, is that why? I told you she messed with me, and I would hope she likes me. She chose to stay with me after so far, after all. What do you mean, chose to stay with you? You didn't know? Know what? You heard about her pranks, but you didn't hear that I adopted her? As a sister, of course. I don't even think she knows why she does it, to be honest. I'm sure if you ask her, she'll just say because it's funny. It can be funny as long as it doesn't involve spiders. On me. So you say you think you know why she pranks people, and it's not because she dislikes them or because it's funny. I eagerly anticipate a straight answer. Instead, she stays quiet for a moment. Cigarette ashes fall on her dark dress like a gentle snow flurry, quickly swept away by her nimble hand. I've seen plenty of kids like that before, you know. Sort of inevitable growing up as I did. There was one kid in the system. She holds her chin in one hand, deep in thought and despondent. I don't remember his name anymore. Everyone called him Rang, short for Boomerang, because, well, he kept getting sent back. Every time he came back to the home, he'd given you reason that it got him sent back. Even the kids started a tally and made a game of it. Stole money from the foster parents. Set his bedsheets on fire. Punched his foster brother in a sensitive area. Threw food on the seedling. Dyed their neighbour's dog yellow. Ripped all the wallpaper out of the house. The adults thought he just didn't know want to stay. 
but I could tell it wasn't like that. So I asked him, why do you do these things if you know they're going to get you sent back? What did he say? He said, if I don't do them, how would I know what things would get me sent back? I'm not sure I follow. Of course you wouldn't, with all due respect. She sighs. Let me put it this way. No matter what you would do, your parents would have never sent you back. But for us, for Ang, sometimes we just gotta test the waters. There was always a line. Cross it and back you go. If you don't know where the line is, then you'd never know whether they love you or a fake version of yourself trying to be perfect. I think I'm beginning to get it. So, Yan, she nods. That's why you let her. As a counterintuitive as it may seem, she has to make trouble because she keeps thinking this is when someone will get mad and get send me back. Even though she doesn't want to be sent back. So what do you do? You just let her... Uh, we wait. React to the prank, but not to her. The only thing that will convince her is time. I see. You'll make a good mother one day. Sorry to disappoint, but I don't think I want to be a parent. Oh well, you're already a great big sister. She ducks her head and laughs, seemingly ready to move past the heavy conversation. I have one last question, though. What happened to Rang? I don't know. He left with the family again, never came back. Maybe he got lucky and this time there was no line. Or maybe he left before he could be sent back again. Maybe he died. Maybe the boomerang got stuck in a tree. Oh. Did you know Yan's name means swallow like the bird? They say they found a barn swallow that flew from Britain all the way to Africa to spend its summer. They say swallows fly south for the winter, but always come back for spring. Oh? Yeah. Thought it was an interesting story. It is uh, interesting, I mean. Okay. Hmm. Is there any reason to ask her about this again? Yeah, we don't want to show that to anyone, obviously. What's about Chip? Chip's got this thing going on. He's the son of the investor. How well do you know Chip? We're friends. We play games sometimes over on his couch. Oh, you should come along sometime. Have you met him yet? Yes, he introduced himself. What story did he tell you? What story? About what was he what he was doing before coming to the circus? He didn't tell me anything, and maybe I didn't ask the right questions. Well, if he does tell you something outlandish, don't believe a word of it. He seems to take it as a personal challenge to come up with a different story for every single person. What did he tell you? She shakes her head uncontrollably laughing to herself. He said... He said he was a paramour to a rich woman. Like a kept man. Like a... Forgive my wording, a gigolo of sauce. He said he was afraid the lady would eventually get tired of his favours, so he learned how to juggle and tell jokes to entertain her. But before that happened, the lady's family stepped in and arranged a marriage for her. They had the teary goodbye and he left to find a new life in the circus. Did you buy it? Oh, did you buy it? Almost. He's a good actor, but some of the details didn't add up. I reckon if I were a wealthy lady, I could imagine about a thousand things I'd want to be entertained by before juggling. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't you agree? I've known rich people with much weirder hobbies. Alright, okay. What does she think about this thing? Is it true that before Harry came, Chip used to be the ringmaster here? Yeah, he was. Why? Does that mean he had to take a pay cut? She was about to hold a cigarette up to her lips, but hearing my question, she forgets about smoking and laughs incredulously. Are you suggesting? No, no, I don't think he cares about the money at all. Have you seen his hats? His hats? What does that have to do with this? I recently learned the price of those hats. Well, let's just say that they are beyond a clown's pay grade, also beyond the ringmaster's pay grade. What sort of hat can be that expensive? You should take a look for yourself. He has them hanging in his room. And train car number two. Interesting. I should check it out when I have the chance. Well, that's a pretty heavy hint. Um, what about the Echo jealousy thing? Did you know that Echo and Harry used to be apprentices together? Yeah, Harry told me about it. 
Well, did you know Echo was supposed to learn magic and he switched to puppetry because of Hattie? He switched to puppetry because of Hattie? What does it have to do with Hattie? I heard that Hattie wasn't apparently very talented, so he might have... Uh... I don't know where he heard that, but I don't think that's true. Does Echo look like someone who want to be who would be intimidated by someone else's talent? Well, I've never heard Hattie mention anything at a saw. Actually, I think she said she never saw Echo perform magic. He's been doing puppetry since Hattie joined, probably. Oh, I can't be sure, of course. Maybe you should ask Echo about it. But maybe leave out the part where it's implied he was jealous of Hattie's talent. I don't think he'll take that too well. My thoughts exactly. All right, I might leave it there for now because there's a couple of threads to follow there. Uh, I'd like to go here as well and see what these guys are. Actually, Echo's not around at the moment. Can we get into Chip's car when he's not there? The door is closed. Guess there's no one inside. Maybe I should come back later. Okay, fair enough. Why are we doing XP-wise? Only fitty. I'm going to talk to Morgan, maybe. I could show him the letter, maybe, because we know it's not from him. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay, fair enough. Well, those are good reasons, so fine. Um, let's ask it. He might tell us about Chip and the Senator, or whoever he was. You made Chip the temporary ringmaster after Hattie's death. Why did you think he was the best choice? Chip is one of the most talented performers here. He knows what works in front of an audience and will do anything to get their approval. It's not just skill, it's uh, determination to lose yourself or to embarrass yourself for the purpose of a great show. He certainly seems like he has no problem with embarrassing himself. He may act silly most of the time, okay all the time, but he is rather smart when it comes to show business. Really, it's hard to tell. I'm aware. He's not the most detail-oriented person, and he might still lack the discipline needed to be a good businessman. But not all good showmen make good businessmen. And not all good businessmen make good showmen. He has the potential to do both. This, was much, this much was clear to me even six years ago when he showed up at the circus with zero experience, yet somehow convinced me to hire him. Much like he did this morning, actually. Well, maybe I have him to thank for this opportunity, then. Well, it worked out for me last time. Okay, fair enough. He's the one who volunteered this information, so he doesn't know who it is. Um... Does he know anything about this? Okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, don't necessarily want to ask Moses about that. I'm sure we've asked him about this. That's how we got the thing for the Secret Apprentice, right? Okay, I'm going to leave that there. We've still got a couple left. Go backstage, see what's happening here. As soon as I enter the tent, I can sense something tense in the air. Alice and Yan are currently talking in hurried breaths, eyes glued to one another in a stare-off. Apparently, I found the two young ladies in a spirited argument. That's not how it works, Yan. Unhappy with how she has to look up at Alice in their confrontation, Yan huffs and jumps on the sofa before continuing their argument. It's stupid. You always... You're just being ridiculous. And you are, like, old. Why do you even care about this stuff, anyway? Because. Because. Yan puts her hand behind her ear and leans in. An insulting challenge. Come on, because... Alice opens her mouth, but nothing comes out. She stomps the ground in frustration. How did Jan manage to get us so frustrated? Ahem. They both turn toward me, still side-eyeing each other. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt anything. Don't worry, it's, it's not important. It is! I'm going crazy. I don't know why I'm having this argument with a 12-year-old. I'm 13! Just why? Yan puts her hand on her hip indignantly and talks straight to me. 
The point is, Santa's not real light. Also Snow White and Cinderella and Peter Pan. Uh, no, I don't think so. She turns to Alice in a whiplash and squeals in such a high-pitched voice that they could have broken a mirror. See? You were having an argument over fairy tales. How did this even start? I said fairy tales are stupid and she got real mad about it. I'm not mad. She sounds ever so convincing, speaking through clenched teeth and flushed cheeks. I didn't even say they're real. I know they aren't. Ha! Huh? But... You know what? I'm gonna... I'm gonna... From the anger or the panic, she sounds a little out of breath, even though she hasn't moved at all from where she was standing. She takes a moment to catch up with her breathing and then makes some kind of determination and sets her foot down. I know they're not. They're just stories. I just like them, okay? What's the point of, of arguing about it besides being mean? I used to have a book and I wanted my dad to paint the castle on my walls. But then he laughed too. Yeah, it's so funny. Laugh. I don't care. I can paint my own walls now. So what if I believe them? People do all that all the time. With liars, with luck, with magic, with Hattie. Sometimes, sometimes people just need it to to believe that their life will be a little better. But we're not stupid. And, and, and so what? So what if it's not real? The Bible's not real either. Well, then the Bible is stupid too. Whoa, 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 let's not get blasphemous here. You don't mean that, right? She glares at me from her high perch on the couch. Okay, well, let's get back on topic. Uh, Alice is right. People Let people believe what they want to believe. I think Alice is right. There's nothing wrong with believing in fairy tales or not believing they're real, but just have faith in them. But you can't even see Santa or the fairies. There are plenty of things we don't see that we have faith in. Yes, religion is one in our country, our love between family and friends, and how about air? You can't see it, but you trust it's there so you can breathe, right? That's stupid. Come on, isn't there one thing, just one thing that you believe in? You're telling me that you never believed in fairy tales, even for just a second. Yeah, it's getting less angry now. Her lips are still pursed, but they're also quivering. When I was little, Mama used to read Grimm's fairy tales to me and my brother. You have a brother? No, shut up. Alice raises her hands in mock surrender. Our favourite one was the one with the brother and sister. They found their way back from the woods with a candy house. I can't remember the name. I can't believe I don't remember. She's getting frustrated with herself now, knocking her head with her hands. Hansel and Gretel. Yeah, and looks at her in surprise before reluctantly nodding. Yeah? We used to ask Mama to tell it every night before bed. I can't believe I forgot the name. There's a brother and a sister and they're so smart. When their stepmother convinced their father to abandon them in the woods, they made a trail with pebbles and found their way back. Well, the stepmom locked the door the second time they couldn't get any pebbles. So their father leaves them in the woods again. And there was a house made of candy, but the candy house was just a witch's trap. The witch was trying to eat them, but they found a way to kill the witch instead. And they ran back home, and their stepmom is dead, and they got all the witch's jewels, so they have money, they live with their dad, and and they live and they lived happily ever after. It always ends like that. And their mama died, we got a new stepmom, and we started always keeping a bunch of pebbles in our pockets so we'd never get lost. It's the perfect plan, my brother said. But father didn't take me to the woods. He sold me to someone else. And I was alone. No Hansel, because of course he's not going to sell Hansel because Hansel's a boy. I just left the pebbles in my pocket. But then, but then those people took me on a boat. And what good are pebbles on the water? They just sink. I'll never find my way back. The whole story's stupid because even if Gretel can find her way back, why would she? Their father wanted to lead them in the woods. And just because, just because she's brought back money, what good, what, they're good now. What kind of stupid family is that? It's just a stupid story, telling lies to children who are stupid enough to believe them. Her voice wavers, but she's not crying, not a single teardrop throughout the story. I don't know what to say. The room is quiet. Yan staring at us as if challenging us to make an objection. All of a sudden, Alice walks over, plops down on the couch, and opens her mouth without looking at anyone. Your father's stupid. I'm not sure what is happening. Jan laughs, sitting down on the couch besides Alice and kicking her legs in the air. Yours too? At least we agree on something. They're both rolling around on the couch, crying from laughing. Occasionally, one of them gets tired and out of breath, but then they take one look at each other and they laugh and starts all over again. I just stand there, feeling like this is a moment they have to have, should have to themselves. Once they finally collect themselves, Alice remembers my presence. 
Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, and sorry you had to hear us being, uh... Oh, look, oh, I don't mind. Sorry for intruding. So you're here for, um... Who am I here for? I just wanted to see what they were up to. We can probably still talk to both here. Um, we got maybe one AP for both. Uh... Alice. Fine, talk about your boring stuff, whatever. Okay, so we have talked to... Oh, we have a contradiction for Alice. Okay. It probably relates to the last time we spoke to her, but I can't remember what we were talking about now. Uh, contradict. I don't know. <laughs> uh. Okay, I'm, I'm going to try a few combos again for this contradict thing. But there's about there's three or four people I've got this contradict thing for now that probably is hiding important information and I just don't know how to unlock it. But I'm going to try and do a few things. Oh, I found it. I found it. <laughs> it was to do with Hattie being irreplaceable and the secret apprentice thing. Apparently. Alice said that Hattie's place in the circus was irreplaceable and she was sure Hattie would agree. Turns out Hattie had planned to be replaced with an apprentice she had chosen herself. You said you think Hattie would agree she's irreplaceable. What if I told you she'd been planning to replace herself all along? Did you know Hattie was planning to leave the circus? She blinks. What do you mean? She received an offer from a TV producer to start her show on television. On television? Yes, apparently it's the future. Where did you even hear that? Oh, it's not important. No, it is. How could you be sure that's true? What, what if someone is lying to, uh, to put the blame on her somehow? Let's just say I am positive. I'm not sure I can believe you. See, Hattie was planning to leave, but she couldn't leave the circus hanging without a magician, so she trained an apprentice herself to literally replace her. It's clear she didn't agree with your assessment. Who told you that? Why are you telling me all of this? I'm just wondering if you knew... I don't know who the apprentice is. I was going to ask that, but that reaction was unexpected. Not a first from her, but something is burning at the back of my mind. Something trying to make sense of this. An unlikely answer crosses through my mind like a meteor, hot enough that I can feel my lungs just burn holding the idea of it. Could it be? You, Alice. You are the mysterious apprentice, aren't you? What? What do you mean? I'm not whatever you think I am. Why would you know I didn't know who the apprentice was? Clearly, you were going to ask me about it. Right, but more importantly, how did you know it wasn't me? Of course it wasn't you. You haven't been travelling with us. You don't... I told you I knew Hattie. I told you about Hattie's plan to leave, which you said you didn't know. I told you about her apprentice. And never once did I explain where I learned all of that. But here I am, ready to take over her job. She just keeps shaking her head. Anyone would have assumed I was the apprentice in question unless they knew for a fact that I wasn't. But how could they know I'm not? Nobody knows who the apprentice is besides Hattie and, well, the real apprentice herself. And you? Well, it makes perfect sense. You're close to Hattie. You're already assisting with her tricks and you aren't a performer yet. What I don't understand, or maybe I do, is why you didn't say anything to anyone, especially after she was killed. I wasn't ready. So you admit it. You are her apprentice. You weren't ready, but clearly she thought you were. And I already said I don't think she could be replaced. The fact that someone like her said something so harsh was already out of character. But that would make sense as a comment more directed at herself than at me. Now you're here. Yeah, now I here I am. We stare at each other, both at a loss for words. She breaks the silence first, hesitantly but firmly. It's okay. I meant it. I wasn't ready. No, ma no matter what she may have intended, she's 
gone for any of it could happen. Even if I don't think anyone should replace her. Not me, not anyone else. I'm, I'm glad you're here. Ah, well, I'll try my best. Right, well, we got the apprentice. I don't think she's the killer, though. Can you do me a favour? I can try. Can you not tell anyone else about me, about who the apprentice is yet? I don't want them to feel sorry for me or want me to step up yet. I, I just want everything to go back to normal. Sure, as you wish. Alice was studying magic with Hattie as her apprentice and successor in training. No one else knows about her identity, and because she feels like it's too soon after Hattie's death, she's asked me to keep it a secret. Hmm. Well, I mean, that just shows how important these contradictions things were. I mean, we knew already, but I'm... I'm going to try even harder next time I'm in Jones's shoes to... There's a couple of people he still has to uh, get do that with. I'm actually going to leave here now. And I'm going to go to Tito's tent and I get myself another AP. Because <laughs> uh, it'd be good to do that as soon as we can. Not least because sometimes he's apparently not here, so... There we go, up to two out of eight now. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, well, I think we go back to the backstage area anyway. Um, we should probably ask, I mean, we should probably ask her this, right? So you were actually the one that's been studying with Hattie all this time. How long has this been going on? About a year, I'd say. Who wanted to keep the apprenticeship secret, her or you? Both of us. We weren't sure how people would react. But lately, she'd been... Uh, lately, it was mostly me who didn't want to say it. How'd you even make it work? No one else noticed you two were training together? She was the magician and I'm the mechanic. We were already taking time to discuss tricks and mechanisms before this. Once the trick is done, what else is there to discuss? Is she working on new things? Some things are definitely being omitted from this conversation. However, in this moment, I need to know about something else. So, have you managed to learn all of her tricks? No, I'm still practicing. But she told Moses about it. So she must have believed you were close already. Close to ready. How could I be? And they say Hattie's one of the most talented magicians ever. And her apprenticeship still took more than two years. Are you saying she was wrong? I think she was. She needed, she wanted to leave, so she had to say I was ready, even if I wasn't. There's no way to find what Hattie actually thought, but I detected a bit of lingering bitterness there. No further contradiction. That's good, though. I think we got good, good, good info out of her. I think maybe we're, we've got one left. Let's have a quick look at Yan and see if there's anything we can talk to her about that might make sense. Um, immediately ask her about, <laughs> about the apprenticeship. Um, what do we want to know from her? We might be able to talk more about the young prankster stuff because we talked to Aideen, didn't we? So we have a bit more of background on that now. Why did you play pranks on Hattie? Because it was fun. I think she would have disagreed. But what I meant is, you didn't like Hattie, right? Aideen likes her. Is that a bad thing? Yeah, that means she'd want to spend time with her. We'd be sitting in a room together and Hattie would give me a dollar and send me away to get popcorn. You don't like popcorn? Don't be stupid. She gave me money because she wanted me to go away. She wanted me to go away because she wanted to talk to my sister alone. And that's a bad thing. It's not good. You know, sometimes people are talking and when you walk into the room, they all just stop. I'm a mind reader. People are always stop talking around me. Because they're scared, you'll find out about all their secrets. Yes. So, they have secrets and she doesn't want me to hear it. That's a very bad thing. Well, now that I know what's up with Aideen and Hattie, she's right about the secret but wrong on her guess. Also, Hattie, seriously? Money to get some popcorn? What were you doing with Aideen? Better not to know. End of turn. Went quick. Did go quick. Um, might just check the time on the video. Um, see if I've got time for a, a Jones day. Hang on a sec. Mm, up to 50 minutes. I don't think so, because I think it's probably about 20 to 25 minutes for a Jones day. At the point where we're kind of racing through the AP anyway. 
Um, but it looks like uh, Echo's doing another performance. Might be good. Let's have a think about what's on our slate for next time, then. We still need to find the owner of the glasses, and I think it's got to be one of these contradictions. Incidentally, Alice still not backstage. <laughs> uh, how are we going to get Alice's alibi if she's never there? However, we can go and get another AP from Tito now. We have, uh, we have enough XP. Um, I won't do that now. We'll do that. We'll remember to do that at the beginning of next time. Um, but thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, we found out who the secret apprentice is. That's quite good knowledge. Um, I don't think it helps us in terms of solving the murder just yet, because I don't think it was Alice. Um, obviously, she was learning the tricks, so she would probably have been practicing with Aideen, and then the mirror makes sense, you know, watching her uh, throwing style and stuff to learn from it. Which leans back into it maybe being an accident, but I just don't get the sense from Alice that's what happened. But, you know, let me know in the comments if you think otherwise. As we know, one of these people's got to be guilty. We just don't know which, which one yet. Um, the big show's sneaking up on us pretty quick. Probably just a couple of episodes now until that happens. And then, um, obviously, the clandestine meeting in trailer number three with the person who sent Jackie the letter. That could be interesting. But, um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts. And if you're watching this and haven't already subscribed to the channel, if you could uh, do that, that would be amazing. So thanks very much, and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.